that time of year where we take a moment and introduce all the mentees that have been through the Jamie Butler Mentorship this 2021. And we're starting off that series of interviews with Allie Sawyers. She is an intuitive medium. Though she may look young, she has been at this game for a while, and now she is owning up to it, creating her own business, and stepping out on that ledge and announcing this is what she's going to commit herself to. And commit, that sounds like such a terrible thing. That's not it. It's actually a joy and a pleasure, but you'll hear from her. So luminaires, please put your hands together. Here's the lovely Allie Sawyers. Hello. Hi, so good to see you. Good to see you. It's good to be here. All right, so before I like to drill you with a lot of questions, can you just take a moment and introduce yourself? Where are you at? What's going on? And can you give us a little bit about your spiritual background, kind of how you've come to land in the position of being an intuitive medium? Yeah, absolutely. So we. Well, I, um, I guess I would say I kind of started with seeing spirits and communicating with spirits at the age of four. And then throughout my whole life, I've been very highly sensitive to energies of all sorts. And then growing up, I had a, in my teenage years, I had a chronic illness for a couple years and it was unexplainable. Nobody really knew what was going on. And one day in last resort, I went to go see an energetic healer and she was like, girl, you got gifts and you need to use them. And she taught me how to protect myself energetically. And once I learned that, my chronic illness went away. So that really woke me up to this whole world. And then when I was 17, I began mentoring under a psychic and I learned how to read tarot and getting in connection with my own guides. And when I was a few years later, I had gotten my yoga teaching certification and I had an even bigger spiritual awakening. And then I bartended and worked in nonprofit for a few years. And then about a year ago, I got pretty busy doing readings and that's been my full-time gig ever since. <laughs> I partly wanted you to say that, and I was a bartender and I had another spiritual awakening because <laughs> come on, bartending can really put you in front of some people and energies where you're just like, okay, I am seeing all walks of life. Like it's a big awakening. Absolutely. Oh yeah. It, a rude one a little bit, but. <laughs> so it's really interesting to hear about your journey through the illness and then kind of discovering an alternative way to heal that and then deciding at such a young age that this is something you're really interested in. Why did you get interested in do yoga? You know, I really just wanted to travel <laughs> and I traveled to Bali, Indonesia for a month by myself and it was kind of a way for me to safely solo travel. And then uh, I was like, I'm just gonna take a yoga teacher training, see what happens. And then I fell in love with it. Yeah. That is, that's like my go-to lean on kundalini yoga to keep my brain stable and attached to my psyche and my spiritual gifts. It is the glue. Absolutely, I, I agree. It's exciting it's knowing that you've taken that path. We have a lot of luminaires saying hi from all over the world. You have a hi from Scotland, from okay. Lydia. Uh, Sarah Bahia is saying hi. Fabiana is giving big hellos, as well as Amora, oh, which who is going to listen to it because she's sneaking out to an appointment. And Katie P, she says, <laughs> yay, Allie, pumped for this chat, <laughs> which I figured in today's chat, we would jump into just some nitty gritty medium talk, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Can I just like crack open inside the mind of Allie and see what's going on. Absolutely. So here you are, you've landed and you've decided intuitive mediumship, this is where I want to be. And you're creating your own company and Luminaires, you can learn more about her over on her website, AllieSawyers.com. It's super cute, very simple. You can navigate it quite easily and you do 
offer a little coupon for the luminaires, but stay tuned for that. We'll hold on to it. And um, you can also find her over on Instagram, Allie Sawyer's Medium on Instagram. But you've decided to take this on as a career and do this. What motivates you to be a medium? I giggle to myself because it's a deep question, even though it sounds super shallow. It's very deep. <laughs> it is. Yeah. What motivates me to be a medium? Yeah. Probably. I just have always wanted to have a profession where I can be of service to others. And I think, mm. well, I can do this. I have this amazing gift. So why not share it and be of service to others? Yeah. I like that part too the be of service. So you called it a gift. Is that the way that it feels like you were given it? Or does it feel like something that you kind of came in with and you've been wrestling it? Or both, really? Both. It's different. As it, I'll answer that question different daily. <laughs> <laughs> I say one day and I'll might be have a different answer for you. On the more positive note where I find it a gift is the way of, um, I don't know, I feel like I have a different lens through the world, um, or a unique lens through the world with this gift. Um, and I do find it amazing that I am able to connect with the other side, other beings. Um, and then other days, it's a lot. And I get annoyed. <laughs> by not <laughs> Not so much. I mean, I get annoyed at my spirit guides sometimes, but I, it's a lot of, um, I guess I would say not knowing between my own emotions and every mm -hmm. and the world's emotions. That's really difficult. It is. It's something that needs to be talked about more. And I like that you shared that you were annoyed with your guides because for some reason I find that when people get to know a medium, they think, oh, that's someone different kind of up on a pedestal or they're spiritual and they don't experience anger, annoyed, you know, frustrations. And that's for me, far from the truth. <laughs> I don't know, what about you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I experience all the emotions that everybody else does. Okay. So as you got into being a medium, as you mentioned, communicating to spirits, is that something that you did personally and then you had to turn to your family and go, hey, family, like, this is what's happening with me? Or was it a, a family experience? Did it come through a lineage that you're aware of? Yeah, um, it, I mean, on my mother's side, it is kind of, um, they're fairly open and um, are gifted as well, but have never like used it or practiced it. So when I was a toddler basically and telling my parents that I was like seeing dead people basically they uh, my mom was very like curious about it and never made me feel like I was weird or different it was talked about openly normally um, my dad on the other hand not so much <laughs> He kind of went from a non-believer to a believer after the experiences that I was having. Um, but yeah, I think when I kind of chose this as my career path, I mean, my mom is the one that really pushed me to do this and was really excited for me and saw all the possibilities I had. Um, so I, yeah, I was very celebrated. And kind of when I turned to my other family and was like, this is what I'm doing as a career. Um, you know, I lucked out and they were all very, very supportive. Okay, huge shout out to the mom. Thank you for giving us the Ali Sawyers we know today. <laughs> Katie P is chiming in and she would actually like to know, um, there it is up on the screen, would love to know how you maintain self-care when providing this wonderful gift full time, you know, full time. And how do you avoid getting drained? That took me time to figure out that balance. A big thing, like we said earlier, yoga, that is my outlet. That is like yeah. my, um, that is super helpful to me. And really when it comes, when I'm working, I have really had to make myself a schedule that 
may not be realistic to other people where they have that nine to five, there's no way I could do this nine to five. Um, and so I really have a set schedule of when I'm working um, and the time for that. So that's helpful. Um, black tourmaline too. That's my go-to stone. I will put it everywhere. And yeah. That's amazing. yeah. So I really just having limits and being human. I think that's a big thing. Um, I think it's great to be spiritual, but also like embracing your humanity is just so special. So having those moments to just be human. Oh my God. I'm like in my head applauding and cheering you on. It's yes, go. So when I think about getting trained, I was actually thinking about this during my morning walk. You know, we have, from my understanding and engagement with the energies that we work with, an abundant amount of it. Like we can just keep cycling it through and sharing it from the earth, from the universe, from all that is, and never experience the drained part. And I was actually asking myself, why is it that there's sometimes we get trained? And I think for me, wondering if it's about you, is my attention span to listen and to hold the depth of other people's experiences, whether it's happy, happy, joy, joy, whether it's sorrow, grief, and bereavement, um, you know, death or suicidal or disease or illness. Like I, I've got a bandwidth only so much that I can give to others before I have to say, now I have to really give to myself to balance it. And I think that's the point where I find that I'm tired or drained or I shut off. What's it like for you? Oh, absolutely. I can totally relate to that. I'm a person who, I'm very social outgoing, but people that know me know that I will hermit mode really quick. <laughs> hermit mode. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, I can totally relate to that. It, holding space for others, it's, um, it's wonderful and I love it, but it can be draining no matter what the topic of discussion is. And so that's when also having somebody in my life like a therapist or um close friend family member that can hold space for me not to, ser not to talk about what's happening in my sessions but to talk about what i'm experiencing and having that open space for myself is super beneficial i my god i so agree okay i've got a little bit more of a personal question and you can play along if you'd like or you can go jamie i swear don't do this to me <laughs> but do you have any readings that you have done that have really just sat with you, whether they were extremely unique, blew your socks off, or you were just like, you've got to be kidding me. This is, I'll remember this forever because of how the content laid out or whatever the situation was, that without sharing the details of who, when, and where, that you could share with us. And, and this just, I'm interested as to why I'm asking, but I think it's always fun to take a glance into somebody's work life and this is a, a good way to do it yeah um <laughs> there was i'll kind of i'll go kind of more on the darker side first but i had one day where i mean typically most of my readings are like love career whatever like that kind of stuff is what normally goes on and so i walked in and this is my problem i had an expectation for a session i walked into my day and it was somebody was dying, somebody's um, close relative just had a violent death. And then I had another one where it was like another extremely violent death. And I was like, oh my goodness, like what? Um, and it was really, it was really difficult for myself. And it's hard to um, not also when you have a ton of empathy, it's also hard not to feel all the grief that other people are feeling. So, like, moments like that and readings like those really are, well, at the time were difficult for me. And now I've kind of adjusted and have switched from, like, being that water without a container and path to having those boundaries and showing compassion instead. That's been really nice. And then other times I've had readings where I've had a spirit of a past loving, like, come sit right up on my lap. And they're just have a whole story to tell. They don't, like... They don't want to listen to me. They're just trying to like tell me everything. They want that hour to just steal the show. 
So that's kind of like my most, I guess, notable readings. Um, yeah. I love that is so true. There could be a spirit, animal, whatever, come in and you've got this agenda because, you know, as you the medium, you're, you're holding place for the client and the spirit. You're the translator. You're balancing it out. And then you get one that's just like, oh, I'm not going to listen to you. I've got things to say. And then the person, your client is kind of like, well, I'd like to ask about, and they don't even give the answers and they're on with their own thing. And there's something to be said that when you show up to receive, like you're going to get what's needed most. And it might not look like anything you wanted or planned for, but it is absolutely what you what you need in that moment. <laughs> we have a lot more hellos. Valentine from South Africa saying hi. June from UK. <laughs> There's a lot of chit chat in the thread, which is so sweet. Um, Gretchen Hodge from Maryland is giving a big shout out. Even Shelly Ham was saying hi, Allie, and she was very intrigued how you shared your gift to your family because, you know, a lot of the luminaires that are here are finding themselves in that place of going, yeah, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Now, how do I turn to the people that I know and love and tell them this is what I'm able to do? Do you have any advice? Invice. Do you have any advice that you could share with them in that way? You know, unfortunately, we're not always going to be celebrated. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just kind of what happens with it. So really practice that self-compassion, that self-love. Find, like, stick with your truth. Like, stick with your truth. And it's kind of like, you know what? People just may not get it. I mean, I grew up in the South. So, you know, I have a lot of, um, I had a lot of that fear as well from my community. Um, but just really when you stick by your truth and know that you're here to do something amazing and yeah, just really have self-compassion. Monica's kind of going on the same line here, Monica Luna, and she's saying, thank you so much for the live stream. But, um, how do you actually hold space for someone? You know, when we were talking about being drained just a moment ago too, and now, what are some ways that you hold space for people? Um, you know, the best thing that you can do is just listen. People, um, you'd be surprised how much people need just somebody else on the other end just to talk to, or perhaps um, you may not necessarily give them validation because that's not totally your job, but through them talking and talking it out, they will find self-validation. Um, yeah, so whether it's just having a call with somebody um, or just checking in on your friends, your family, those close to you, asking how they are, um, you never know where somebody might be at. So really just check in on people and um, try not to insert yourself so much when they're sharing because um, – it's not always about us. It's not always about you. Um, so really just being able to step aside without judgment and just let it, letting that person talk through. And if they need advice, then maybe step in and offer your advice, but try not to give unsolicited advice. That's beautifully put. I stand by that one. Um, we have some hellos from India. Sangeeta is saying hello. She likes the afterlife interviews. So we're enjoying getting to know you. I have a few more things I'm kind of interested in. Like when you do your mediumship sessions, do you do them in person, online, video? How do you work? Right now, I mean, the majority of my mediumship readings are through Zoom. Um, so when you work with me, then you'll get a Zoom link, or I can do them through phone too. I prefer Zoom. I get a better read of the energy. Mm -hmm. um, and then in person, I mean, most of my clientele is everywhere. Um, yeah. The best thing ever. Um, so, and I move around a lot too. I'm trying not to stay in one place. So, um, but yeah, I can do them in person too if you're in my area. 
That's so sweet. Okay, um, you did something very kind for the Lumineers. You offered up a discount, yes. right? Do you yes. mind sharing with us how to find you and how to use that discount? Absolutely. So if you go to my website, it's alliesawyers.com. Just click whatever session you want. And when you are booking, just put in the code JB sent me for 15% off a reading. Yay. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> it's good practice too. I always find it a little bit difficult to talk about my offers and what I'm doing. It's taken a long time for me to find my voice. So it was really great practice to hear you just announce this is what I'm doing. Why in the world did you decide I know we kind of figured out the medium stuff so that you can be of service to others, but to go out on your own and to be a solopreneur, what interests you in that? Oh, so many things. Really? Um, what? It's, you know, it's not easy. It is no. by no means always fun. Um, <laughs> but I have never really wanted to work a typical nine to five. I really enjoy my freedom. That's a huge value of mine. I love to travel. Um, next week, I'm, those of you who have me booked, actually this week, I'll be doing readings from the beach. Like, I love having that freedom. And also, too, I mean, I would rather work a hundred times as harder for myself than have anybody <laughs> above me telling me what to do. Uh, that's just the kind of person I am. And, um, Really, I struggle a lot with ADHD, and so being able to run things and run my own business has given me a huge like boost in my self-esteem for what I can accomplish. So, I, I mean, it's not for everybody, but I highly recommend it if you can do it. I do, too. <laughs> but you're right. It's a lot of hard work. And it's interesting because in our field, you know, being an open person like both of us are and doing the type of work in our spirituality, you know, we often imagine that we have such a big community if, because you have that openness and vulnerability. But I tell my students, spirituality is one of the loneliest paths because each path is individually made for you. So it's not that you look up and you see the thousands of other people walking that same path with you. You are uniquely doing it on your own, even though you're a part of the whole. So to choose to do that, then also be a solopreneur. I mean, it's like cutting yourself off even more and even more. It's really important for us to collaborate in ways like this to build that community or else it can get super lonely. Yes, no, that's for sure. And that's where I, if I think everybody on this path kind of hits a point where they do feel a little bit of that like loner wolf syndrome is what I call it. Um, so really finding a community or just even like a one or two people that you can um, talk to, that's the most helpful thing ever. Help, makes, makes it a lot easier. It does. So I was just reading our chat thread and Luminaire Nana Rosebud mention something so i'm going to throw it out there see what your insight is and what she's saying is if if we have free will then i wonder if psychics can see into the eventual outcome of two pathways i love this question yeah i yes. so the way i read i do read it in multiple pathways so when people have choices, I kind of break it down for them and say, you know what, this is your free will. I'm, I always say like, I can tell you what I see right now. And then the rest is up to you and the universe. But um, yeah, when people are, which most people are when they come to me deciding over big things like jobs or love life, um, they kind of present me with, I don't know what to do. So I kind of break it down and say, okay, Kind of when you go down this path, this is what I see for you. If you go down this path, this is what I see for you. And kind of have them weigh out the balance. I think I lost Jamie. 
Oh no. Did I lose her? I think I did. But anyways, yes. I'm gonna read a few more questions until I get Jamie back. Let's see. Can you describe how you receive information? How did you begin? When I, thank you, Andrew, when I receive information, so I'm a multi reader, so I can receive information in a multitude of ways. So I can either see, hear, know, smell, and even taste what spirit is trying to communicate to me. So um, yeah, kind of through all those different ways. I call myself like a Swiss army knife when I read because I just sit there and then spirit, I really just trust that they'll lead me in the direction that I'm supposed to go. And they'll kind of just hop in and using multiple different things at once. And that's just kind of my flow and that's how I work. Oh. Thank you, Jocelyn. I have a question from Jocelyn. She says, tell me when you met your guides. Okay, so, you know, we most of the time have guides that come in at very short amount of times um, or for long amount of times. Just kind of depends on what we're going through in life. So I've had guides that we have kind of like birth guides. And this kind of goes off of like what you personally find in your own truth but in my experience I have found that yes we have our birth guides um, and we also have guides that pop in um, momentarily throughout different moments and the way I kind of really sat down and made that contact was through meditation um, to any frequency will be um, yeah five what is it 582 hertz frequency I love that one for connecting with my guides um, but yeah, just meditation. And then that's really how I met my guides. Let's see. How did you find out, is your name Rika? I hope I'm not butchering that. Um, how did you find out that you have this gift? I found out that I had this gift when I was four years old. I started seeing and communicating with spirits and that people couldn't see or other beings that people other people in my family couldn't see um and then I like I would be sleeping at night and I would just wake up and I'd have all these spirits standing beside my bed and it terrified me at the time because I didn't know what was going on Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's see. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Allie? Hello, Luminaires. I don't know if this is working now. It seems like we are being lovely, like joined by the Eric who likes to pull stuff like this because my internet says it's perfectly fine as I've checked everything 20 times now that we've been frozen. <laughs> Hi, Tina. Hi, Ed Gonzalez. It's so good to see you guys. I know, but now Allie is kicked out. I don't know where Allie is. <laughs> this is entertaining to say the least. I love how she took over and just didn't skip a beat and started asking questions and engaging with you guys. She rocks. Right, Deb? Yeah. She's killing it. Yes, I think so. I think it's 
Eric having a hand and then just enjoying and there's several other things. The energy runs high when multiple mediums get together, get together and boy, we can really mess up some stuff. Oh, Weedy, hi. I hope Ali answered your question. I'm going to text Ali. Log back in. Scrolling down. Hi, Meyer. Hi, Abiel. <laughs> Yes, she's doing great. She's doing great. Christine, thank you so much. Crystal says, can you see Eric when he's pulling pranks? No. Most of the time I don't see him when he's pulling pranks. I don't even recognize his energy. But then it's like after the difficulty has occurred, that kind of friction, the what is happening? And then you realize how order, out of the ordinary it is. And even though you've problem solved it, it's still not functioning. You realize there's another hand in play and that's normally where I hear him. It's like this giggle in the back of my head. He's such a turkey sometimes. Yes, Ali knows Eric pretty well too. So I'm not surprised that this would totally be something he would do to her. And it's so cute because we didn't even talk about what would go down if this is the occur, occur. She is back on. Hi, Allie. Look at that. <laughs> but now you're kind of, your internet now is like freezing you. Oh no. Happy Mercury and retrograde. I know, everybody. so it's going. <laughs> that and a little bit of like, happy coming out day for Eric. Am I still gone? Yep, you're still on. Okay, perfect. Can you hear us? Yes. Good. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Thank you so much for just grabbing that and then answering questions and looking at the thread. That was beautiful. We yes. have so many compliments. Aww. Yes. Well, handled that like a charm but there were, do you have some time extra yeah. time because i would love there's a few other things that i would love to to get you to share is um if you haven't covered it already how does your session work so when people get onto zoom how do you connect to spirit and what kind of answers how do you take that energy and translate it into the information and then deliver it as a message yeah, absolutely. When you were gone, I kind of touched on this, but I'll frame it in a different way as well. Um, so say you're coming into a session with me. Um, I will, before we even start, I meditate for about 30 minutes just with, I call in your team um, and I just meditate for about 30 minutes with your energy. And I just ask for any messages to come through at that moment. Um, sometimes it'll be like, I'll have 20 million things to tell you. And other times it'll just be like, okay. Or my guides will be like, no, you're just connected with the energy. Like we'll talk when you start. I'm like, okay. I just kind of roll with it. Um, and so when you come see me, um, for the most part, I'll kind of just introduce myself, talk to you. Um, and then when I'll pull some cards, I do love reading tarot, um, it's one of like my favorite divination tools, but I'm also an automatic writer. So you'll see me writing throughout our sessions too. Most of the time it looks like chicken scratch. Like you can't really see what it, anything or what it means, but somehow it gets information out. Yes. Uh, and two, I'm a multi-clair reader. So I'll hear, see, feel, um, smell, even taste what spirit's trying to communicate and I kind of just get in a flow state and just roll. I love that. And how, like, what kind of information can you get? Is anything open or are you more attuned or aligned with health, wellness, you know, spirituality, it career? Really just depends I kind of just uh yeah it really just depends um on every session is different it is isn't it when, when people ask me that question I go well how 
well of a communicator, how good of a communicator is your spirit team? Because if they can communicate it. But I, mm -hmm. You can hear that. You glitched a little bit, but I think we got you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> the Murian Arc, that's Rachel. She says, this girl is so multi-talented. Hi, Rachel. Shout out to another mentorship grad, soon to be grad. Aw, you mentioned smell, says Sarah Rahias. That's so interesting. Weedy Stowers says she really can't wait. She's so excited. She having a session with you? Yeah, she already, bu I, she booked with me, I think last night or this morning. Um, so I'm adding your coupon code, BT Dubs. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to meet you. Oh, that's so thrilled. I love this woman so much. She is incredible. So for everybody listening, if you really enjoy Allie, her energy, her outlook, where she's coming from, and you'd like to work with her, and that's just everything in you is like so interested, go for it. Put your fingers to the keyboard, type in AllieSawyers.com, head over to her website, use the coupon code JB sent me, and set up a session. Don't miss out. Just like I said in the title, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, I knew her when. <laughs> I knew her when. Sydney said, I just booked two. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my gosh. Yay. I just got chills, too. I'm excited. <laughs> so is there anything that you use on a daily basis or weekly or just embedded into your life, like a golden nugget, like that little piece of advice that you self-counsel or find you offer it to other people that you can share with the luminaires? Yeah, I guess I would say just to love yourself unconditionally. Um, we as a collective are so hard on ourselves and I think the world is hard enough. So just be that one person that's kinder to yourself. Be your own best friend, be your own cheerleader because um, you, ha you have to, you know? So just love yourself. I love that Nike should take that one. Just love yourself. <laughs> Ariel's saying, I just booked my appointment too. So you have a lot of luminaires who are gonna come uh, over. I am spend so some one-on-one -on -one time with you. My heart. I love your message. I love what you stand for. And I'm so thrilled that you're a part of the mentorship group. I really am. And I know during the 22 weeks, we're on maybe week 19 now that, you know, a lot of stuff has been growing and brewing, but you have just come in with your A game from day one, even though you stay very quiet, it's like she's the one you kind of have your eyes on. We have a lot of those in our group, very quiet, more introvert, and we don't get to visually see all the shifts and changes, but then all of a sudden they speak up and you are blown away. And today did that for me, listening to you. So casually respond to your truth, being authentic, just having the bravery to show up online and say, yep, this is who I am. And that goes for everybody who steps up and says, this is who I am. It's a big moment. And I secretly want to do another shout out to Allie's mom. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to share? And could you let them know again how to find you yeah. and keep up with you? Absolutely. Um, if you'd like to book a session with me, just go to my website. It's AllieSawyers.com. Use the 15% off coupon code. JB sent me. And then my Instagram is AllieSawyersMedium. Um, I try my best to post. So, But uh, you'll see other things that in the future that I'm going to want to be doing. And I'd love to see you all there. Thank you so much, Allie. Imagine everybody's applauding going, yeah, we're so happy to meet you and to know that you're out there and this is the work that you do. Thank you for this. Thank and um, you. this is not going to be the last time. I think we really want to get together. Luminaires, let me know if you like this. But just get together as two mediums and just kind of shoot the breeze with what goes on. Not that it's like some secret or anything, but... I don't think there's a lot of psychic mediums, intuitive mediums out there that are just 
expressing what it's like to have that skill and be in that lifestyle and career. And it just might be a little eye opening. Tina's going, yes, even Tina Tuttle. <laughs> so thank um, you for sharing. <laughs> well, and thank you for this mentorship. It's been absolutely amazing. And I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. That was really nice to say. Thanks. <laughs> so we will see you later, Luminaires. Have an incredible rest of your Monday. Choose happiness. Every moment is a choice. Put a smile on it instead of anything else. Remember, this is not woo-woo. It's true, true. And I'll see you back here Wednesday where we're going to be talking to Tatiana. And Tatiana is, what are we going to talk about? I think we're going to talk about the holographic universe. It's kind of like the Akashic records to all that is. And then we're also going to be speaking to a young woman named Vina who does light language on Thursday. It's beautiful. Take care, Luminaires. Bye.